In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Well, one more day in the octave of Easter. So let us prepare to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us today. By listening to the Word of God. By appropriating the Word of God. So we prepare ourselves to receive what God has to give us. And at the same time, we prepare ourselves by asking God for forgiveness for our sins, recognizing with humility that we continue sinning, although we know the word, so sometimes we are stubborn. But uh, let us also ask for forgiveness of the church. Today, Thursday, we focus on, uh, on the priesthood of Jesus. So let us pray for, them, for forgiveness for the sins of priests, especially priests and bishops, that we may be able to be faithful to God to be docile to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit so that we may be true shepherds for the people of God. I confess to Almighty God Let us pray. O oh God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the fount of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety. The God of Abraham has made strong, and the faith that comes through it 
has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen our response to this reading. O oh Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You made him little less than the angels and crowned him with The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It is, my, it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. That were, while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. We continue in the, in the gospel with all these accounts about the uh, apparitions of Jesus uh, after his resurrection. Today we have one more. You remember yesterday was to these two disciples that were going from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and, uh, and they were not able to recognize Jesus on the road until he brought for them the bread. And they right away returned, returned to, to Jerusalem to, with the rest of, of the apostles. Well, today's, today's gospel is the continuation of, of yesterday's gospel. And, uh, well, there, the 11 were there, the 11 uh, apostles, plus these two uh, disciples. They were discussing about the apparitions of the gift, peace. And this, and this gift, nobody else can give it to us. Nobody else. Not money, not people, not circumstances, nothing else but God himself. And, the, and it is given to us by the risen Christ. So one of the greatest gifts, besides the most wonderful gift of the resurrection of Christ, which is a resurrection as well, is while, while we are here on earth, we are able to enjoy the peace of Christ. But we have to receive it. At the end of the gospel, Jesus says to, to his disciples that uh, what is, what is uh, happening is 
what was, what was already said by the, by the prophets. And he says at the very end that, uh, this, and he said them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations. And that is what we see in the first reading. In the first reading uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter uh, and, and John were uh, coming into the temple. You, you, you remember this. You know, when we were coming to the temple, it was this crippled man at the side asking for alms. But they say, you know, we don't have money, any money, but what we have, give to you. In the name of Jesus, you know, walk. And the crippled man stand up and walked and and he joined them coming into the temple, very joyful. And the people were amazed of all this. A lot of uh, uh, crowds uh, uh, went around them. And, and, and Peter says, I, I, and I like this, you know, because he's, he's a very humble person, Peter, in this, in this moment. He's not like a very prideful. You know, um, people of Jerusalem, why are you so amazed to this? It's not we. It's not because we are holy people. Because we're, it is... Christ. This is the work of Christ. Not we. It is Christ who is doing this. So they are preaching Christ. He, uh, Peter and John are preaching already the death and resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and as we can see, Peter is already experiencing the life of Christ within himself. Because he said, you crucified the Lord. It was you. I mean, yes, I remember a couple days ago, you did it. But no, you know, you did it out of ignorance. This is what Jesus was saying when he was on the cross. Remember that he said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they, what they are doing. So Peter is experiencing the life of Christ. He sees people with the eyes of Christ. He, not, he does not judge people, but he's preaching with hope that you may repent from your sins and then your sins may be forgiven. And this is the very fact why Jesus died for our sins, that may our sins be forgiven. And by having our sins forgiven, we have eternal life. Because the only thing that can separate us from God is sin. But having no sin, which means we are united with Christ. We have this united. So the resurrection of Christ brings us, brings us this. You know, first of all, when we receive the resurrection of Christ, that the, the peace of Christ come to our lives. Because, uh, as St. Paul used to say, it doesn't matter if we live or if we die. What really matters is that we are gods. We are Christ's. And this is the most important and joyful thing we can experience. Having Christ in our lives, having God in our side, is a source of peace, a source of uh, assurance, a source of hope in our lives. And uh, as, uh, as the church uh, proclaims these words, is for us to receive it and continue making ours the resurrection of Christ, continue appropriating ourselves the resurrection of Christ and sin or, or, or strive to, to be acquiring the, the heart of Jesus. Like Peter, to think like Christ, to judge other people with compassion, not with condemning people, but compassion. I know that you are uh, ignorant. I know you are... The, but, but, you know, there is always hope for you. Repent. Repent. And that is able to give us this life that Christ came to give us. So let us continue praying to the Holy Spirit to give us this capacity to embrace the resurrection of Christ, to really believe, to understand, or to give us this capacity that Jesus gave to his apostles to understand the resurrection of Christ, to understand the Word of God. Well, as we continue this journey in this uh, Easter season, we continue to pray to the Holy Spirit for this gift. Amen. Knowing that his words lead to eternal life, we turn to our Father in prayer. For the church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness as we nurture a culture of healing and life. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the world, may the peace of Jesus heal our brokenness and restore justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are ill and struggling with their pain, may God's grace bring them comfort and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this assembly, may we grow in faith, hope, and love, transformed by grace to a life of gospel fidelity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of those in vocation formation for priesthood or religious life in the Archdiocese of San Antonio and the missionaries of the Holy Spirit, especially Luis Horacio Gomez, Joseph Duque, Brandon Dariel, and Pardo Villegas. May God guide them with his wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of those special petitions and prayer needs that you hold within your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the special intentions of this Mass today, for Jose Guadalupe Toscano, and for Marcus and Cole Medellin, Medellin, sorry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us also pray for Tony, you know, his apparitioner, he used to sit most every day right here in front. Well, last week I went to anoint him in the hospital. I don't know how is he doing because I don't know his telephone number. But let us pray for him that may the Lord continue strengthening him uh, uh, and his illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, hear these prayers we offer today and graciously answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work your human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Praise sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously we please, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn 
and in hope of your increase and increased help from heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalting your praise, and even the heavenly powers with an angelic host, sing together an ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gustavo our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who had fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with Saint Luke, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This celebration has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.